Alan Kosicki smoldering the tires as Ed takes it a couple of hundred feet down the racetrack and they both roll to a stop at about 330 feet. They begin to back up as their trained backup professionals assume their duty positions and begin to ring the cars back up and straight in the groove. We'll see these drivers pull dry hops, and I started to explain this last time, but back in the day before there was two steps and everything else, drivers would perform dry hops to figure out how much traction was available on the racetrack. They would be behind the starting line, they would rev the engine up to let's say 4,500 to dump the clutch. Well, if the thing stuck the tire and pulled the nose, maybe they'd raise it to five grand and try it again. They would try that once or twice to figure out exactly how aggressive they could be on the starting line. Now in today's world, we have devices like uh, two steps that manage the RPM on the starting line, devices that help us perform that act. But back in the day, it was all about the driver, figuring out how they were going to launch, and a little recreation of that action right there as Ed Kosicki and Mickey Hale bring their way in. Kosicki and Hale, Hale from Batesville, Ohio, Kosicki also from Ohio, a 427 inch big block with a huffer on top of it for the Warlock and a 400 cubic inch small block with a huffer on it for Kosicki, both cars pre-staged. In goes Kosicki, in goes Hale, first to the finish line before they go under 560. Reaction time favors Ed Kosicki, but the elapsed time is going to favor Ed Kosicki as well. 565, 4 at 123, Kosicki's going to the final here. Mickey Hale, a two-time winner at this event in 2013 and 2015, will not be appearing in the 2018 final round. Hale goes 568, 4 at 127, 49, which just ain't enough. And Mike Kalinowski, the unfinished business, 1948 Austin, going to be backing up to the starting line next to Bob Cook in the 1957 Crazy Grandpa Straight Axle Corvette. Several famous straight axle Corvette gassers over the years, perhaps none more so than Big John Masmanian's, which was painted a beautiful candy color red. Masmanian owned a garbage company out in California, and actually his trucks were apparently painted the same color as the gassers. He had guys over the years like Rich Cerunian and other very good drivers piloting his cars. Bob Cook, the sole pilot of his, as both cars make it back to the starting line. Great support for the Scott Rods AA Gasser category coming from NGK Spark Plugs, Scott Rods Customs, Hot Rods and Fiberglass, Diversified Carriers, Auto Meter, Gasser Wars Magazine, Good Vibrations Motorsports, Casalis Mobile Maintenance, Low Car, Mosier Engineering, Mickey Thompson, and the Summit Racing Equipment Burnout Contest, which each and every time these cars appear anywhere, whether it's the U.S. Nationals or anywhere else, Summit Racing Equipment's throwing up dough for the best burnouts. And let me tell you something, the fans love burnouts. We've seen that proven over and over again. Who will be facing Ed Kosicki in the final? Will it be Mike Kalinowski from Orchard Park, New York, or Bob Cook from Chagrin Falls, Ohio? It could be an all-Ohio final, which would be fitting for the land that birthed many of the great dancer legends. Reaction time, it's Kalinowski in the little 1948 Austin, but at the finish line stripe, it is still him, 561-117. Mike wins, beating Cooks 563-3 at 120. Kalinowski had about a 300s advantage on the starting line, carried it all the way down to the stripe, and stretched it by one. The final round of the Scott Ross Double A Gashers will be coming in just a little while. A whole lot of fun here with these vintage machines that capture what drag racing's golden ages. <laughs> Thanks, man. <Yep. laughs> That's awesome. You've been no problem. <laughs>